project we'll be working on. Uh, what I want you guys to do is open a new drawing. What if, if you already haven't? Uh, you can open up your template. You guys probably have templates from last year. I would recommend using those since you're gonna sooner or later you're gonna put this into a template. But I don't have one, or I, I won't find one anytime soon. So I'm just gonna use this. So I'm going to use a blank slate and we're going to get started with drawing this. For, for those who printed this out, it's not coming out right, but that's okay, we'll figure this out as we go. Yeah. Alright, what we want to do is, if you look at the project, okay, let me see. I'm just going to start out drawing each part separately and then put it in the middle make it make the full drawing out so I would start probably with the drawer detail again we're going to skip the uh, the handles for now we're not going to do those I mean it's nice to know where they're located but since we're not going to be using those we're not going to draw them in or actually we might just you know, we might we have to draw in the the holes at least, so we'll do that. Now to do that, we know we have it all dimensioned. The easiest way to draw the drawer detail would be basically using rectangle, the rectangle command. Now the rectangle command is up here. What you're gonna do is select that. Just gonna click anywhere on the screen; it doesn't really matter. Once. Move your mouse, you can see it's actually making the rectangle. What you want to type in next is D for dimension. Because on the bottom over here, it shows you your options. You have area, dimensions, rotation. What we want is D for dimension. Enter or space. And the next step is the length. Uh, it's going to go with length and then height pretty much first. So you pick the length, which is going to be 20, and the height is going to be 8.75. So what you're gonna do is type in 20, enter, space, or whatever, and then you gotta type in 8.75. And you gotta just select down here anywhere. That's my first uh drawer head, we call it that way. Uh, uh, so the first two drawers are actually the same size, so I'm just gonna use the copy command, I'm gonna select the object, go to my copy command. Copy it from this point to the top point. This allows me to have two and just click escape. So now I have two drawers. Now, uh, for anybody who it knows how to do this and is this is pretty slow for them, go ahead, move forward, it's fine. I don't mind. I just want to test. This is all it's pretty much a test of what you guys can do. Now, once you guys have this 2D drawing complete, it's we're gonna actually make it into a 3D for your own benefit. And hopefully we can, and you'll be able to draw it out. So, if you really wanted to, you can get it CNC'd by a company and get it priced. Who knows? Maybe you you'll actually make this. Well, I don't know about this cabinet, but you can modify it as you go. But we're gonna make a standard one, and then from there we'll do work on. So now we have two uh, drawer heads. We're gonna add one more. Let's go to go again to your rectangle command, pick this corner here, and again the dimension is going to be tw D, enter first. Uh, yes. Uh, on your screen? Here, I'll look at it. No, uh, it's not 6.12, it's 6.125. That's just rounded. No, it looks like last year it's there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So next one is six point one two five. Create that. And again you go to your copy command. So copy and you copy it up. 
Now to make sure this is all correct and fine and dandy, by matching it to this, what you can do is go to your dimension tools which are in the annotate. Here you got basic dimensioning, so you select that one, and you can start dimensioning it. The only problem is I don't have my dimensions set. Hopefully your title, I mean your yeah, title block that you opened up that has everything set up hopefully so your dimensions are uh, in the right size. If not, that's fine. I can show you guys how to change those or update the dimension style. If you guys want to do that, it's not that hard. What we can do is actually the only thing here is I'm missing a couple of tools. Now to get to these tools, what I have to do is go over here. Where this arrow is pointing downwards. I select that, and I say show menu bar. That gives me my menu bar, which is very helpful. Again, to get to that, you have to do is go down this arrow, and you go to menu bar. Now it's hide. So I have that, and so we need to do our dimensioning. So I go to format, dimension style, select that. I create a new dimension style, call it dim for dimensioning. And the thing I need to fix is well, text height at least two inches. And let's see, arrow size, go to, to uh, two, actually 0.5. Again, text I made 2, go to your text head, put 2, and if you go to symbols and arrows, I went to arrow, 0.5, the break, you can do a quarter. Now, as you see these change, these will change. Uh, I think that's what we need. Let's see. Click OK. I'm going to double click on it. Set to current. Close it. Now I'm going to go to dimension from here to here. Well, I can. Uh, my arrows are a little small. Too many zeros. So what I have to go back to format dimension style, go to that, same dim dimension that I created, go to modify, the text is correct, arrow size I will make 1 inch, primary units, uh, oops. round, right. our precision here, go to two zeros. Alright, I think that should be it. I'm sorry? Two zeros. So if you go over here, go to primary units. Precision is with two zero. Don't worry about the round off. That's not going to affect it. Don't change it. Uh, click OK. Set to current. Close. Again, okay, I'm going to hit dimension. And that looks about right. I mean, you guys can make the arrows a little bit bigger. I set them at one, so you can make it twice as big. So set at two. It's really up to you. Hopefully, you have your dimension styles set up already. That way, you don't have to go through this whole procedure. But again, the reasoning we did this was to check if our drawers are correct. And for actually, this one's correct, but you can see it snapped on to the dimension. That's one thing you have to watch out about, watch out for. So I start dimensioning this. There's an easy way if you have a consistent dimensioning. What you can do is once you dimension the first one, you can click over here to continue. This allows you just to continue. So it goes to the next one, to the next one. To the next one. Click enter or space and you get all your dimensions. That's really helpful during architectural plans where you have 
We'll measure from a window to the wall to the window to the door to the window. A straight line. That's very helpful. It's easier to go back and forth, back and forth. Gives you a lot of work. Alright, so this is basically our front. I didn't show the handles, but I do want to actually place them uh, where the holes are going to be. Now, the one thing I know is the holes are going to be one inch offset from, from the top, from each drawer. So what I can do is I can offset actually squares inside. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Uh, let me show you guys how to, what I mean by that. I go to offset, I go one, and I start offsetting inside. So I select the exterior, select inside, select the exterior, select the inside. Select the exterior, select the inside. It makes it look nicer for some reason, but that's not what we want. What we want is we want to find two holes right here. So if I go to my other drawing, you can see that there should be one here and one here where the handles are attached to the drawer. Yeah, there's a dimension over here. I don't know if you guys have a PDF. It didn't print out. Sorry about that. Just set the monochrome layer. Differently. But anyways, uh, and we're, I guess we're missing a dimension for some of you who actually want to do this. Let's see. Plus. Yeah. That's about right. So I would put the holes 8.5 from the wall. Again, you guys don't have the dimension. You guys want to write that in. Sorry about that. Should put it in. But I mean, it, it all depends on your handle. If your handles are going to be different, you might have a wider handle. Holes might be farther apart. Uh, but the design I made that these holes. Let's see if I mirror this. They are going to be. Three inches apart, which is, I guess, isn't too. I think that should be enough for you to grab, put your hands in there, and pull the drawer. Again, these are not specific, uh, correct dimensionings for the handles. I don't have it with me, so I can't give you the exact data. But we'll estimate it at three. So to get the holes, we can put put knobs actually, which are a different kind of it's not a line it's just a dot it's right here multiple points they used to call it knots so now they're points so to get to that we have to first find where we want to place them I'm going to draw one line over here from top to bottom make sure it's I can type in F8 for ortho direct no, this would be F8 Oh, I don't know why. Mine, mine's not working. All right, so F8 allows you to uh, make ortho mode on or off, which allows you to draw lines at 90 degree angles instead of at a, at a specific degree. So again, we just got to draw a line up. Going to change the color so you guys can see it better. All right, I don't know if you guys. Yes. So I drew a line to the side. Now I got all I have to do is select that line. I'm gonna move it. I can type in M for move, or you can use your move command here. It's the big one, and we're gonna move it down 8.5. At this point, this intersection is where we want to put our hole for the handle, or we're gonna actually put the point. So if you go to the tools here where the drop down draw arrow is. And go to point, you will select. Well, I don't have intersect. If you cannot snap onto this position, that's okay. You've just got to change your op object snap options or O snap options. Right click, make sure you have intersect on. Right click again. Uh, see, here it's called nod, and here it's called point. So fi go figure. But these should all be on that I have on. So I have endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, intersection, 
and extension. Perpendicular too. Alright, so once you have that selected, you can get an X for intersection, and you can select it, and that's where you're placing your uh, point. There you go. So if I do a blue box select, you can see that the dot is there. Next thing you're gonna do is just you're gonna select that blue dot, or because it's it's actually not not supposed to be it's not blue. It's a dot, so it's black. But if you select it, it turns blue. Just like the line. And what you're gonna do is make a copy. You're gonna copy it over three inches. So type in three, enter, and you should have. I don't know. I think I selected. Okay, so I have one here and one here. Now to make sure this one's correct, I sh I can do is just move this three, and that's correct. Now, come to think about it, I didn't actually have to do these these offsets at all. What I could have done is just do the first one. I delete this. Actually, I don't need it anymore. Got those two dots. What I could have done was select these two dots. And just copy it from top of this drawer to top of this one, to top of this one, to top of this one. And that, oh, actually, yeah, that's that's all the. You guys can see that, right? Those dots. Kind of, sort of. Uh, let's see if I can scale these. No, it's not going to work. Yeah, you can't scale points, I guess. Kind of sucks, but and if you want to get into a points command, you can also type in point. You don't have to actually go over here. So that's another option of getting to this position. Oh, this is pretty cool. I can I'll teach you guys that later. So we have our first part done. What we want to do next is our second part, which is the draw uh, the door. It's the same exact height, that, that's why I did with the dimension. But, so it's 29.75. So I'm just going to do a rectangle command again for the, for the door. Now, if you go to a square corner over here and you move your mouse down, so it looks like you're actually going 90 degrees, you'll see a dotted line, and that actually aligns it with the bottom line of your drawers. Now, mine's green. That's the newest version. 2011 has different colors. It's pretty cool. So it creates a green one. It sucks for you if you don't if you're colorblind. But uh, you select that and you gotta type in D for dimension dimensions. And your base is gonna be 20 again. But your height is gonna be 29.75. So Again, that's right here. That's where I got it. Uh, we can, oh, well, actually, we can add layers. But you guys know how to do that. Hopefully, does anybody not know how to make layers? No. Raise your hand. Screen. You guys know how to make layers? All right, great. So you guys gotta do that by yourselves. That way, I don't nag you guys to death. But before that, we gotta actually draw the lines where the layers should be. So our first line is actually uh, it's a drawer. It's an indicator of how your door will be opened. So you're gonna start at this corner to the middle with your uh, middle O snap on, and then to this point again. Again, this is all right. Here's a trick if anybody's interested about how those lines should be drawn based upon how the door opens this side is the opening side this is the hinge side I know it's weird how they designed it but that indicates that this is going to be the open side and this is where the hinge is so just a reference for anybody who, anybody who is interested so now the location of I didn't put that in again one more mistake on me. Anybody's interested? 
Just add to All right. Again, anybody, you guys are probably missing this dimension. Sorry, again, I didn't add that. The handle for the door will be 1.63 from the side. Well, that's the handle hole. It's not where the handle actually is located. It's where the hole is located. First hole. The second hole is going to be offset three inches. So you guys know that. It's the same handle type. I mean, you guys want to make it different? That's fine with me. I want you guys first to draw this whole triangle based upon the specs I gave you and then we might actually if, if we have enough time I'll let you guys design your own that way we, we won't go through 3D yet today I think we're just going to postpone that till next week we'll make this into 3D yes alright hold on let me see if this is working alright so the next, but, uh, next step will be that we will actually make the shelf. Now, if you put go into my notes, I, I, t I told you guys that all the material is three quarters inch thick, so this shelf is actually three quarters inch thick, but if you want to know what size exactly it is, because it's not exactly full out from, uh, from the door to door, because it's spaced just like this, there's, there's that three, uh, three quarters inch thick wood before the door, uh, shelf comes in, and there is a three-quarter piece of wood right in the middle which preventing this from going far, uh, getting any bigger right here. It's hard to explain. I mean hopefully when we get to 3D of this you guys will see it better. And actually uh, what I do want to show you guys is this is not the exact project. I Back to this. So the drawer is actually 19.8 Eight sun five because it rounds up by uh, three quarters inch thick. So if I go back to my drawing, I can draw a rectangle over here, uh, deeper dimension. I'm going to type in 19.8 sun five by 0 0.75. That is my shelf that's going to come in here. Now I have to place the shelf is actually placed against. It's a quarter inch off from here. Uh, I know it's hard. Actually, not quarter. It's actually this is a all on one, so twenty. Right. Okay, so it's a quarter inch off from here. So I'm gonna take this shelf. I'm gonna move it from the center uh, midpoint over here to the midpoint here or the end point of these two lines and what you gotta do next is move it down 0.25 even though it's extending over here don't worry about that it's supposed to do that so again I moved it over 0.25 now you don't really worry about that because that's just a design aspect it just shows where the shelf is it doesn't really, you don't really dimension where it's located exactly because they'll do that later when we have it the other parts up here we might actually show it but it's obvious where it's going to fit so it's not a big deal sorry about that but it would be nice to have the exact same size because you're going to use that to actually make the shelf top the full size of it uh, once you have that we can actually put in the handle uh, points where the holes are for the handle Again, I dimensioned it, and it's 1.63 down by 2.38. So instead of drawing lines and then drawing a point, what you can do instead is, if you really want to, you can just go to a point, you can make it at this corner, click Enter. So I have that point, I'm just going to move it down. I did M, Enter, or Move, and it's 1.625 right? by 2.375 move by 2.375 that's my first dot I select that I go to copy again I scroll down make sure my ortho is on let's see, check by that and I'm going to type in 3 and so that, those are my my holes for the second handle 
which is what I needed. Got one, two, three, four. Now we're not going to do holes for hinges and stuff. That's just a little too much. But if you guys really want to, I can go through it. We'll leave it off for today. We'll go back to it if we need to. All right. Uh, so we have our actual door detail complete. Now by the end, I want you guys to put it in layers. I want you guys to dimension it out and to label it. So it doesn't have to be this whole kind of setup as mine exactly, but it does need those aspects. I need to know where the top, you know, uh, de design wise, you do want the front to and the top to be on top of the front, and you want the side to be the side on the side of the front. You get the hang of it. So we have this complete. What we want to do next is I'm gonna skip the front for now. Move the side. Or actually, you know what? Let's just do the front. It's 42 by 35. So <laughs> the thing is, though, because the box is gonna be bigger than this, it's gonna go downwards. But I want aligned. So, well, actually, you, know, you have to you can draw it using a rectangle and get to this box. You can move over. Not that any kind of specified distance. You can click, and you can type in D for dimension, 42 by 35. Select to position it, and to actually make it aligned, specific, you have to move it down four inches. Yes, 35 by 42. And to get it aligned, all I have to do is move it down. So I select it, M, enter, move down, four inches. Now it's going to be aligned to the exact where the doors are located in here. So I got that four inches from here because actually it's supposed to be a little bit more. It's 4.5. So I have to move it down a little bit more, 0 0.5. It's 4.5. Just make it clear. Anybody's asking about that. And what I want to do next is I'm gonna draw the toe kick, which is four inches off from the bottom. Now to offset it up four inches, I'm just to, I'm just have to uh, explode this first, so I select it. I go to my explode command up here. Explode it. Select this. Go to copy, go up, four inch. Got myself a toe kick. Let's see if this is still running. All right, yeah. See if it... So once I have that, what I have to do next is to draw the actual uh, face, not the actual drawer face or door face. I need the actual face behind it that's supporting. The drawer and door from going all the way through to your cabinet. Now it's it gives you the thickness here, the thickness here, and the thickness here. So this is all going to be drawn out. Not the blue. If you guys can see it, the blue should not be drawn out, but the black. Even though the blue overlaps the black, you gotta draw that too. So the easiest way to do that, because we all, I know that it's all three quarters of an inch all the way around. I'm just going to draw a box since this one's exploded already. I'm going to just trace over with a rectangle from here to here. I have this box. And I'm going to offset 0.75. Gives me the ex exterior right here. Now, you notice I have lines up here that shows you where the cuts are, which piece goes where. So I got to make sure I put that in here too. So it's one. So I can't snap on. The reason is my O snap for uh, perpendicular is off. So I have to go down here, right click, perpendicular. That's on. Go up, select. Got one. Gonna do the next one. Bottom one and the other bottom one. I can, of course, I can copy paste, but that was like the quickest way I could do it. With 
So the next step is actually I need the two lines over here that are 1.5 apart to, uh, to get these two lines. What I have to do is I will draw a one center line and I'm going to take that center line, I'm going to move it over or you can offset actually 0.75 both ways to get 1.5 or you can move this one 0.75 and then you go to copy, you select this line and you go this way 1.5 so so we basically have the front face complete the object which is great uh, what we want to do next is we'll do the side view now to make the side view easy what we can do is go to the line command I'm just going to move our mouse over the top edge of our front view. Just move down a little bit. Select it. And we're just going to go down. Um, height is 35. And going sideways, 20 is actually 19.5 before we hit the, before we hit the toe kick. So because if I subtract 3 from 22.5, I get 19.5. I'm going to go up 4, cross 3, and 31 up. And instead of just clicking, what you can do is type in C for close, and that will close your box. It makes a shortcut, kind of. It's really up to you if you want to use that. Uh, once you have that accomplished, what we want to do next is we'll do the back view. So we're just going to use this line here. We're going to use a copy command for this or you can offset and copy it down. Once we copy it down we're going to do that actually a couple more times. So I'm going to copy gonna go 0.75 and then I'm going to go 41.25 then 42. So I'll close it up from the top and the bottom making sure I select the edges exact corners that is my back view we pretty much finished the uh, front views of, and the side views and the back view what we want to do next is we're going to do the top view now the top view looks something like this it's 42 inches wide, 0.2 and a half deep. That's our standard that we're going to be using. Now, should get this. It's pretty basic. Uh, what we can do is, again, use a line command, trace over from this edge, moving upwards. You know, stop wherever you feel comfortable. You type in the distance 42, 22.5, 42, and C for close. And it closes it up for you. Got that. Uh, what we're gonna do is take this one, copy it four inches up. Okay, take this one and copy it down 0.75 to each side 0.75. So select it, copy 0.75. Next problem is here is it's overlapping. Now what you can do is select it, align, and just stretch it back like so, or you don't want to do that, what you can do is use a trim command. The easiest way of using this trim command would be just to select trim and just select the whole object. You know, you're not supposed to do that, but that's the easiest way that you don't, you don't get confused. This trim is usually a tricky one. So if I go to trim, I select my whole object, click enter or space, and then just click off what I want trimmed off. So I want this trimmed off and this. Like that. So I mean, trim is a very important tool that you need to learn, and it's a little tricky. So I prefer just selecting a whole object and just removing what I don't need. And if it doesn't work, you just do it again because sometimes it doesn't allow you to do it twice. So depends on the depends on the situation. Now, here's a trick. Here's a easy uh, way of drawing. Well, normally you wouldn't be 
drawing it this way, but if you wanted to do a shelf, and you already drew the front view of the shelf, so I have this shelf over here, I have the exact same size that I need, except uh, the lengthwise, I don't have it, I have it wrong, I'm just going to use it, I'm going to copy it, since it's a rectangle, and I know it's three quarters inch uh, thick right now, so if I go to modify stretch command and I select the, the line and the two lines going vertical those two verticals that are half selected they're not fully in the box will be stretched the whole line on top that's being that's in the box is going to be moved so you have to keep that in mind so if I do that I click enter and I'm going to stretch it up 17.25 which will get me the 18 by 19.88 uh, or well, 19.875. So I got my shelf uh, shelf done. Uh, what we need to do? We need a toe kick base. This is the actual toe kick base, which is down here under the cabinet. I don't know where that is. Uh, the same basic concept as this one. You're just gonna make a square. You offset a 0.75 from each side, and the middle part here is a 0.75 thickness. So keep that in mind. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. You guys should know that by now. Here, this was a little bit trickier to understand. Uh, this is the drawer head. This is the side of the body. This is, and I have this dashed in so you guys can see what's inside. I'm not going to draw out the whole uh, drawer to pieces, even though I should. If I wanted to get it to CNC by a machine, we'll probably have to do that. But that is an example of one of those small drawers, not the big one. Because uh, the big ones are actually 8.75, this one's up to 6.125. And I also did a front view of it, so you guys can see how uh, it gets attached to the pieces for a door. I didn't put the railings in yet. Could do that, but I did give enough, give enough spacing. The point seven five is the spacing I, I allowed for. Actually, you have half an inch, really, not point seven five, because the drawer head overhangs. So I gave enough spacing for it to have the uh, door uh, ra railing inside. So that is that. Uh, hopefully, I explained it thoroughly and you guys can finish it up. The rest of for now, we'll see what time we'll finish and I'll decide if we go to 3D today or not, or what we're going to be doing next. So if anybody has questions, please raise your hand and come around.